Hey folks, welcome to day 64 of my year of solo board gaming, uh, which is considered by many to be ill-advised and stupid. Uh, I am back on screen today, uh, as opposed to yesterday. Um, we are playing uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You can actually see that I've still got some of the pieces from our game yesterday, where we had Willow and Giles go up against the evil preacher uh, Caleb. Uh, we're going to do one more game today. Uh, yesterday was the end of uh, Horror Week. This week it is Adapt or Die Week, uh, which means that we're going to be playing games that are adaptations in some sense. Um, this is obviously ever, uh, adapting a TV show, uh, but we've got some other stuff uh, lined up as well. Uh, so this time around we're going to play as a different uh, different bag. We're going to play as different characters. So we're going to place sort of these two aside. We're going to place that aside. Take the big bad here, and we're going to go ahead and let's do this. Let's go one, two. Let's not do Richard Wilkins. Nothing against Richard. Uh, I like him as a as a big bad, but I did a playthrough uh, of him that, and recorded it, but found I made so many errors that uh, I decided to had so many things wrong that I understood about the game that I decided to uh, redo it. And I found this helpful. Uh, this sheet on Board Game Geek, uh, and I forget the person who put it up there, uh, L Coach Seven, I think. Uh, but basically, it is a turn-by-turn -turn summary of what you're supposed to do, uh, along with some of the things that are are easy to miss from the instructions. So we've got four characters here. I think I'm actually going to pull out the master as well because I think the master. Uh, no, let's keep the master. So one, two, three, four, and we'll go ahead and, and... Alexa, roll a four-sided dice. I rolled a four-sided die and got four. All right, well, it's Glorificus then. All right, so we're going to go with Glorificus, and I think we're going to go as far as players go. We're definitely going to include Buffy. Let's go ahead and include Spike. Um, it's Buffy and Spike. It is later season uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which means that they are hooking up left and right. Uh, let's see. These are plot points, I think. Monsters of the Week. One plot point. One plot point for Caleb. Now, the way that I like to do this, uh, I like to have this set up, is that at the top of the board, I will take three of the plot points for the character. Uh, so, in this case, Glorificus, which is going to be down here. Not one of the better seasons. A great ending of a season, but definitely not one of the better big bads. Now we're going to just basically do a little shuffle. Wow. I'm checking out the when she reveals herself. That is, it is nasty. All right, so we're going to deal out four, uh, three of these. These are the plot points that we need to address. Now, I imagine you could probably, you know, expand this out and just be like, okay, so we're going to play with four plot points. Or we're going to play with two plot points. Um, I don't think there's anything in the rules about it. It might be under the, you know, make things more difficult or make things easier. Obviously, the more plot points there are, the more things that are going to be difficult to to handle once the, everything becomes revealed. Essentially, you are you are stopping the big bad by dealing with each of the plot points until there are no plot points remaining. All right, let's go ahead and do one more quick shuffle here. We're going to take the Monsters of the Week. We're going to give this a shuffle as well. And what we're going to do is place one Monster of the Week card on each plot point. Um, now, the plot points themselves don't become revealed until we pick up the clue token. And the big reason why you might want to not want to leave the clue token is that um, there are negative effects associated with the clue tokens uh, whenever, uh, when they come up. Uh, so if you have a clue token out here, each big bad will have a different reason why that's a bad thing. Uh, so for example, uh, for one, for the, for the big bad, for the master, it's uh, you have to reveal a vampire uh, each round if there's not already one on the board. The thing is, most of the plot points have effects that are worse than that, so it is still generally better to keep the clue tokens hidden uh, and unpicked up until you are ready to actually go ahead and deal with the big bad. So we're going to put one monster of the week here, one here, and one here. And the rest will go ahead and put a little pile over here. 
Uh, we're going to do, let's go ahead and pull these two. As characters, they did their job in successfully stopping the evil. Put the evil right here. Uh, we're going to do Buffy and Spike. Buffy always starts first. She is the king. She also starts with a wooden stake token. I will say the action, the items deck in this in this game gives me angina. Uh, it is a, a frustrating deck uh, to deal with because you're supposed to be shuffling it, uh, shuffling the discards back in constantly. You always need to pull out a couple items. You always, and I feel like it's one of those things where it would have been better had they just simply given you an eight sided dice and said, you know what, roll for your item and then pull it out of the appropriate deck. Um, and I think the reason that they didn't do that is I don't think that the counts are even. I don't think it's an even item count. I should probably get the items out first that we need. So Spike is going to start with weapons. Let me go ahead and put this back over here so it's not in the way. Uh, Buffy is going to start with a wooden stake. Not surprisingly. Um, and she can fight to dust one vampire at her location. Uh, her special slayage is to perform a move action and a fight action in any order. Uh, after performing this fight action, stun all baddies into your location. So you got three vampires over here. She can jump, she can move, fight, and stun everybody. Uh, Spike's special uh, ability is to slay all your baddies in your location if you have weapons. Then for every three baddies slain, add one wound to the apocalypse track. It's also a pretty, pretty good ability. Uh, wounds are easy to deal with on the Apocalypse Trucks. You can always go ahead and, and deal with wounds. It's when townies end up on the on the Apocalypse Track. For every townie that you have, that is un, that is you cannot do reverse that. All right. So item deck is now shuffled. We'll shuffle the artifact uh, deck when we need to. It is for the most part unused uh, throughout the game. I have found that most of the artifacts are not worth the time and effort to pull up. Um, we're going to go ahead and put a clue token on each of these. We'll save this one until after we revealed it. Uh, and I think we're all set. We need some standees. I think that's the only other thing that we need to do. So let's go ahead and get some standees here. We're going to go Buffy. Now, obviously, they include little standees so that you can have them standing on the game. Uh, but since we're doing a top-down uh, perspective, I'm going to keep them like this. Now, he starts in the crypt. Uh, she starts where? Summer's residence. So she's over here. Spike's over here. They're both bad boys. Uh, they're both bad for each other. It is uh, not good. Uh, and then finally, we need Glorificus. Now, we don't put her on the board yet. She'll come out after her third plot point has been revealed. All right, let's go ahead and put all these back. We'll put these two back. You could technically play with six characters, but I feel like that would just get out of hand. Uh, now, the first part of the setup uh, that you have to deal with that's different for each game, uh, Gnarl. Gnarl appears at Shadow Valley Vineyards, and we have one thing that we use for all of the monsters. We'll go ahead and flip that over, because I think it's going to be easier for you to see Monster of the Week from a distance than the little monster vid, uh, image. Characters cannot move from Gnarl's location. Gnarl cannot be targeted by the effects of the artifacts, and the items required are a stake and weapon which these two have. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that back on there. And then uh, the last part of the setup is that you have to resolve an event for each player. And this is something that I was doing wrong. Uh, I was only resolving one event uh, for during the setup, regardless of how many players. Now, you can play true solo. You can play one character. I just find it gets out of control real quick. Uh, vampire. We need a vampire at the bronze. A townie needs help at City Hall. And then that's it. We don't, for when you're setting up the event, you don't worry about the third item on the thing. Uh, a vampire lurks at Shadow Vin Valley Vineyards. A townie needs help at the magic box. And again, we ignore the third item during setup. So that's going to go there. We're going to keep those on out. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to take a little sip of a coffee. It is currently 7 o'clock in the morning as I'm recording this. I've also got the heat blasting because it is freezing outside for Arizona. You would think that wouldn't be a problem. 
uh, here in Arizona, but it is actually cold this morning. So uh, obviously the first thing that she could do is she could uh, move and dust that vampire uh, and deal with that. I wonder if the best thing to do is just go get some steaks. I think what I'm going to have her do for the, her first action is... Yeah, I think I'm going to have her get weapons, actually. She's going to go to the initiative base. Spike is going to go ahead and get some stakes. He's going to go ahead and pull out some wooden stakes. There we go. Two wooden stakes. The item limit in a two-player game is four per person, five if you're playing Giles. If you are playing with more than two characters, it's three items, and if you're playing solo, it's six, or it's, again, seven with Giles. Uh, so that is his action. She is going to go ahead and take a couple wooden, a uh, couple weapons. That's her action there. Spike sees what's going on. He's going to jump in. He, he's going to get, he's going to get ready to deal with this, this crisis as best he can. So that's his jump. Buffy is actually going to get in place. I think we're going to have her do a her move and fight. So she moves. When you move your characters, you can move anywhere on the board. It's not restricted to just whatever is adjacent. The adjacency things are used to move baddies in relationship to townies, uh, as well as figure out if they're attacking a character or not. So she's going to move here and attack because she's got the wooden stake. Uh, so she dusts the vampire, boom, at the bronze. But because she did use her special event, she has to draw an event card. Or special uh, talent, I mean. So a demon is now at Sunnydale High. A vampire is lurking at Sunnydale Cemetery, uh, which is up here. And move one demon towards the nearest townie. So we're going to move that demon there, which is not good. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and move, uh, we'll have uh, Spike, we'll have Spike use his regular ability to deal with the Monster of the Week. Monster of the Week, he's going to use an weapons and a wooden stake, and then we're going to draw an event card. Uh, now the event card, Gnarl's ability is uh, down here on the bottom, is that right? We took two wooden stakes, we moved, third one is out. So you'll notice that there's a, tri uh, a triangle and an onk at the bottom. If this comes up triangle or onk, Gnarl's defeated, we move on to the next monster of the week. If it comes up uh, as the star, the inverted star, then I can do one of two things. Either I can accept the defeat, or Spike can lose one of his basic actions uh, to resolve the event. Now it's early in the game, so I don't think that I really want Spike to lose an action this early. Uh, but let's see what happens, and we'll take it from there. We got the triangle. So the event succeeds. He has slain Gnarl, showed up at Gnarl, basically kicked his butt, so we'll move that there. There is now a clue token at Shadow Valley Vineyards. We'll go ahead and retire that monster of the week. We do not reveal the plot point yet uh, because we've not picked up the clue token, but we do move on to the next, uh, the next monster of the week, which in this case will be Dirk Hinderstad, who appears at the Summer's Residence. Uh, they can only slay the Kinderstad with their last action of the round, and they require holy water and magical supplies. So those are going to be things that we have to pick up. Put that there. Uh, and now the last item. Uh, so Buffy is going to move to Town Hall so she can deal with uh, deal with the townie. Uh, now she has weapons, and I think what she can do, uh, you can slay one demon at your location with a weapons card and then discard the weapons card. So that card is now discarded, the demon is slain. Uh, and when you are dealing with uh, locations uh, like this, um, I wish I had some way to deal with that last, I think I might. I think I might actually be able to save this townie this turn. Uh, so. 
Maybe not. I think the Der Kinderstadt are going to be the problem here. Uh, so if you have monsters at a location, if you have baddies at a location, you cannot use that uh, location's ability. So if Buffy were here and the demon were still here, I could not move a townie to City Hall. Um, so that's unfortunate. Uh, let's see. That was uh, Buffy's last action, so she's done. Uh, Spike still has his special action, so he could, if he wanted to, uh, go ahead and fight that vampire there. Uh, I think what I want him to do is uh, he can't take the crosses, unfortunately. I think he's just going to use a special action that's going to seem weak to move to the magic box to help out that townie who's there. And then we're going to draw some event. Uh, draw an event because it's even though I didn't use the special action, it still counts as the special action. You have to use all four tokens, so you'll always be causing an event each turn. So, Vampire appears at Angelus's mansion. Um, a demon appears at Timon Terrorizes Restfield Cemetery. And then finally, uh, if there are any townies sharing a location with each other, move them to separate locations. Player's choice. Fortunately. None of the townies are sharing location with each other, so we're good. So now we get the... Now, this is the other thing that I was doing wrong. Monsters attack townies and characters that are at their location. Then they move. Uh, so you start with the big bad. The big bad will, I think... And again, this is actually really helpful. Monster of the Week. Check, uh, check Monster of the Week cards for effects. And activate or more. So... There is no special um, thing that happens with this particular monster of the week, but they do attack and move. They will move. Uh, their priority is on a, an unattended townie, uh, an unprotected townie, a protected townie, and a character. Uh, so right now there's a character here. The monster of the week will move one uh, and put himself there. The vampire will now move one. This vampire will move one. This vampire will move one, and this demon will move two. But it doesn't really matter because they're already there. So now we got a whole bunch of baddies, and unfortunately, we don't get to protect any of the town or save any of the townies this time around. Uh, we're just going to have to deal with some nastiness here, um, which is going to be tricky, uh, to say the least. Uh, but that is the end of the turn. There's nothing that happens because of Glorificus. Uh, at the end of the each round, uh, kill one townie at each location containing a clue token. Fortunately, that's not the case here. So, first player token moves to the other player. And we're going to flip all these over. Now, Spike no longer has weapons, which is a frustrating thing. Uh, because Spike should have weapons. Um to do what he needs to do. He could discard the state to get rid of the vampire. Uh, let me see what I can what I can do here. Oh, and this gets to flip back over too. So I think we could either go ahead and deal with the kind of kinder stud, which is going to be difficult to say the least. Uh, Buffy could cause the Monster of the Week to move. That might not be a bad idea. I think she's going to use her special ability to kick in first. She is going to go deal with this vampire here. Slay him, because she's got the, the stake. Uh, and then because that was her special event, her special thing, she has to draw uh, an event card. Uh, a vampire lurks at the Summer's Residence. Townie needs help at Glorificus's mansion. Move a vampire towards the nearest townie. Well, technically, that vampire is closest to that townie, so we'll make it that one. Neener, neener. Uh, and then on her next turn, she'll be able to do some extra special stuff. Uh, let's see. Spike needs weapons, so we'll move him here. Buffy can now draw three items. One, two, three. She has drawn magic supplies, cross, and 
weapons. Uh, she's going to keep... I think she's going to keep these two. She has to discard the other one. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this so that it fits on screen. We'll do it like that. All right. Uh, so she's got three items now. That was her second action. Spike will go ahead and take some weapons. We'll just draw them from the discard so that we don't have to reshuffle the entire thing. Uh, Buffy will move back to... Let's think about how I want to do this. She will take the cross, which allows her to move a vampire anywhere. Uh, is it to any location? In any location, one space. So unfortunately, that's not going to be able to move that vampire here, which is really what I would want. She will move that vampire here. And then on her next turn, she's going to move to the Hellmouth. Spike will now use uh, his third action to jump back to the magic box. Her, for, her fourth action will be to move the Monster of the Week to a new location, which will be where Spike is. Um, and then because Spike has weapons, he'll use his special ability. I feel like I should have one more action for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm pretty sure she went here, she drew weapons. Um, she actually fought and moved, that was the special. Then drew weapons. Then went here, and then, then so on her last turn she would activate the Monster of the Week thing. All right, so technically she should have had that. I think I flipped one over when I did the, the cross, so and I shouldn't have, because that is a free action. So uh, Spike is now able to use uh, Slay All Baddies at his location. For every three baddies slain, we're going to add a wound to the track. And we activate the special event. Uh, a vampire lurks at UC Sunnydale. A townie needs help at Rosedale Cemetery. It's not looking good. If there are any vampires and de demons sharing a location with each other, there are not. So don't have to worry about that. Now her last action will be to move the Monster of the Week one, uh, one spot that way. Originally I was going to have it, uh, have it go Monster of the Week here. But since this is now cleared, I think we're going to be okay. I think so. None of the townies get attacked because they're not sharing a location with a baddie. So now all the monsters of the week and stuff go. Now the monster of the week is going to choose the townie, a, a unprotected townie, over anything else. So monster of the week will go here. Vampire sensing a fresh kill will go here as well. We're sort of doubling up on that. We're going to move this vampire here to Rosedale Cemetery. Uh, and then I think we're good. I think that's the end of it. So now the plus side is we got to save a townie. And then this townie here, you always check for passive effects if there are any in place. The townie that's here will move to the crypt away from the vampire. And that is the end of the turn. So now we flip everybody over. Uh, and I just want to make sure I've done enough events. There should be two events uh, for three turns. Starting turn two... So yeah, I have an extra event here. How do I have an extra event? Because I had to draw one to check. Never mind. So yeah, that's right. I had to draw an event to check the uh, the glyph on it. And we're going to go back to Buffy. Now she needs holy water to deal with the big bad. Uh, 
Now you can choose to investigate. Um, it's usually better to just simply Uh, what do I want to do here? It's usually better to go to a location to get those specific items than it is to draw because it is difficult to, it can be difficult to, uh, to guarantee the items that you need. What do I want to do? So I think I'm going to I guess get the go to go to the catacombs to go get the holy water that I need. And the problem is I'll only be able to use uh, I'll only be able to get one holy water or I'll have to discard something which kind of blows. Uh, Spike will go here as the second action and then discard this to dust the vampire. So that vampire is toast. Her second action is going to be to get some holy water. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the bottom here. We're going to get holy water. That's one. As the uh, as the discard action, you can discard one of these to stun a vampire in any location, which is nice. There we go. I can only use one, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Uh, Spike's next action is going to be to move here to protect the townie. Uh, her third action is going to be her fight and move. Now, technically, this is a fight. You can do this to fight the, their Kinderstad. So it will be move. We'll use these items. And now we have to check to see if it is a star or a pyramid. If it's an Ankh, we got some trouble. It's a pyramid, so we're in good shape. We get to bring a clue token here. The monster of the week is dead. We'll also go ahead and have her use her wooden stake, which I think is might be a, a mistake. No pun intended. To dust the vampire. So we'll wait. We'll wait till the next turn to. No, we'll do that now because we're gonna need a wound otherwise. Is that that bad? No, that's not that bad. We'll go ahead and uh, keep the wooden stake. We'll keep the vampire there. Uh, she did use her special action, though, so if we do initiate event. Oh, and we have to start the next monster of the week, too. So the Durkindestad is dead. The last monster of the week will be... Sweet! Appears at the bronze. Which means, just like in the last video, I'm gonna have to sing the remainder of this game. I cannot believe that I've got this thing where I've got to sing again. Nobody liked it last time. Nobody cared for it. But here I am trying to sing the latest Broadway hit. A vampire lurks at City Hall. Oh, oh no. A demon terrorizes the bronze. Oh, oh no. All characters with items must discard one item unless a character shuffles one artifact into the deck. So say goodbye to weapons and weapons. And now we're in a wreck. We've got two items. That's all we've got. We are facing quite the dilemma. Uh, and now let's have a spiky look inside the crypt for items. I really want to knock this out. So item searching it is. And maybe then I can do something about this dude. I can't believe I have to sing again. It's just so frustrating. We're going to take a lot of wounds this round. We'll go ahead and fight and slay this vampire dude. And then as an additional step, we'll discard to dust his pal. 
And now we go back to Spike, who's going to use his last action thing to just simply search the item deck. And maybe we'll get a book to fight Sweet. Nope, we just got some holy water that we can use to stun a vampire. Doesn't really do much help at all. Dang. And now we draw another event. A demon appears at Sunnydale Cemetery looking to wreak some havoc. Uh, where is, uh, there we go. A vampire lurks at Sunnydale High. I think he's taking shop. If there's currently at least one vampire sharing a location with the character, add one wound token to the apocalypse track. Uh, it looks like we're good. There's no vampire here, but we're going to have to deal with some end of round baddie stuff that's going to be sucky sucky monster of the week will move right here uh demon will move here to the unprotected townie the demon will move here to the unprotected townie vampire of the week will move here stupid vampire of the week uh and then this town he's fine we have no passive effects at any location on the board, but this townie here will go, yay, I'm saved, thanks Spike, you're the best, awesome. There's a clue token with a townie in the same location, so we get a little wound on the apocalypse track. I'm not going to try to rhyme, I can't come up with a rhyme, I've only had half a cup of coffee. I know that I'm supposed to have this amazing mind, but I cannot come up with a bunch of stupid rhymes. Now we flip the vampire token, the first player token, over it onto Spike. Flip all these over, and we begin round four of our life. We need to deal with Sweet right away to stop the singing, because that's going to drive me nuts. And our first move is clear. Our first move will be to go to Glorificus's mansion so the spike can knock out all those demons who exist. Corbuffy has zero items to call upon, so she will pull from the items deck and just simply take two items out. She gets a wooden stake. She gets some holy water. She's really looking good now to save her fictional daughter. <clears throat> Uh, we go back on to Spike, who is at Glorificus Mansion. She will you he will use a special ability to knock out those demon dudes. For every three on that we fight, add a wound to the apocalypse track. But I don't think that we have to round up. There's certainly nothing here that says that. We do have to draw an event to see what else happens here. A demon terrorizes Sunnydale High. What sort of classes are they running here? A townie needs help at Sunnydale Century Cemetery. Why on earth is he there? Uh, place this card beside the game board until the end of this round. Vampires must be stunned before they can be dusted this round, even by special abilities. You suck. Uh, I don't think Sweet moves. He does not move at all. So Sweet stays there until we can show up to the bronze and kick his demon but stun using holy water the vampire is going to chill i need some tomes from here. Uh. Uh. I'm a little stymied as what to do since I can't fight that demon. I'm going to draw some items instead. Uh, that was.
was, yeah. That was second action. Now it's time for Spike to do the third thing that he's going to do. Which is move here. Have no fear. Spike is here. And he will use his weapons to get rid of the demon without using a turn. Buffy is here without using a turn. Dust the vampire. And now she can draw two items. Tomes! Tomes! Wonderful tomes! I think I can get sweet this round. It's not the worst thing in the world. He moves back here. His, wound, his turn was wasted. But he moves back here to save the townie. She uses her special move and fight. She uses her special to move this out of the way. I think I can deal with singing for another round if it means that I get to avoid a wound. But we have to draw an event card to finish off this round. A vampire lurks at Sunnydale Century. Oh, that's this horrible place. A townie needs help at Sunnydale High. What's wrong with this place? There's a vampire and a character. No, there is not. So the event card goes over to the side and we can still use an item without using an action. So at the end of this, she will stun that vampire. So at least we don't lose a townie to the funeral pyre. Now it's time for monster activation all around. The monster of the week is sweet. He does not gain any ground. The vampire here is done, so he does not do a thing. And I think that's all, and that's at least what I sing. So now we take a look at the board. We reverse the stun vampire. This townie is saved. Hooray for Spike! I get to go away and retire. And I think that's it for the round. There's no townie with a clue token in its space. So nobody's walking up to the clue token and having it go off in their face. Buffy will be the first player starting up this round. She will be responsible for taking down Sweet and ending the sound. Why couldn't it have been the gentlemen who were the monster of the week? It might have been boring watching me just a hot speak. But at least you wouldn't have to listen to this incessant noodling. But her first turn will be to fight, move and fight, and watch Buffy do her thing. Books, 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 sweet, here are the books. Now you will go away if there's an onk or upside down star. And it's an onk, it's an onk, it's an onk, it's an onk. Sweet is now kaput. And I can stop singing. I honestly, like both games, I get sweet. Are you kidding me? How on earth does that happen? Uh, but anyway, the last clue token is going to now be at the bronze. The monster of the week is retired. And this is kind of why you do it like this. Um, by doing it like this, we now have just basically some cleanup that we can do. Uh, we don't have to worry about Glorific is coming out quite yet. Uh, this is going to be nasty because she's going to put a whole lot of townies on the board. So we kind of get the I got to get the, as many items as we can to deal with the plot summaries. Now we can reveal two uh, before having to deal with the third um, and having her come out on the board. So we'll we'll reveal two. We'll get whatever we need for that, and then we'll go on to the last one. So, but we did use a special item, uh, special action. Uh, Vampire Lurks at Shadow Valley Vineyards. It's all the way over here. Demon is at the terror, uh, at the magic box. And if there's any demons adjacent to a character, there's not. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, so Spike's first action uh, will be, I think, 
uh, to simply move to Shadow Valley Vineyards so that he can get the first of the first clue. Uh, Buffy's action will be to actually take the clue token. So that clue token is done. Uh, we're going to reveal a plot. Now, technically, I think that was sweet, so that'll be this one. Plot. Each time a demon is spawned, it immediately moves towards the nearest townie. To deal with it, we need a cross and tomes. We've got the cross, we need tomes to deal with that. Uh, Spike's next action will be to take this clue token. That was uh, Gnarl, so we'll reveal this first one. Characters cannot rescue townies. Uh, we need holy water and a cross. Sorry, holy water and weapons, and honestly, I should have had weapons already. All right. Uh, so Buffy's next action will be, I think, to go to here and get the tomes on the next turn. Uh, and in the meantime, do we need a we need we need a cross for one of these? So I don't want to use that yet, and we need holy water. My concern is that I think the vampire there is going to end up. Oh, these unprotected townies should have moved here on the next on that last turn, so they're hiding in the catacombs. They're fine for now. Sorry for forgetting that. Um, so yeah, she's going to move here. She can't save the townie, unfortunately. Uh, Spike's next action will be to get weapons, so he'll go to the initiative base. And we'll have him use the, before he moves, he'll, we'll have him use the wooden stake to get rid of that vampire, just to help clear the board a little bit. Her last action is going to be to get tomes, which she can do because there's nobody here, uh, which is kind of nice. So she got some tomes. Got some tomes. That was her last action. His last action is going to have to be to take two weapons from the deck. But since um, it is also his special action, he has to use that as his uh, as his basic action. Uh, we're going to generate an event, and then that's going to potentially mess things up a little bit. Go ahead and shuffle this one last time. We still have one more thing at City Hall, and then Glorificus's mansion over in the corner. That's where she'll appear, and we'll deal with her when she comes up. Uh, so we draw an event, because uh, he used a special action. A demon is terrorizing things at Angelus's mansion. Townie needs help at Restvale Cemetery. And replace any one townie on the game board with a demon. We'll go ahead and replace, this might seem um, counterintuitive, but I think we replace this one with a town a demon. No, it'll be, it'll be this one. We'll replace that one with a demon. Make it a little bit easier. And then this moves towards the nearest townie uh, because of the plot effect. So that demon is there. Fortunately, we're there too. So we're going to take a wound, but at least it's, a wound is better than a dead townie. So first we start off with the monster activation. Uh, the demon attacks for one wound. Then the rest of the monsters move. Uh, this vampire is closer to a townie. Uh, this, these two demons will move towards townies. They will not move towards characters. And that's an important distinction. So even though Spike is closer, both of these demons will move towards the townies that are off in the corner there. So we got to deal with that soon. All right, and then this passes over here. We don't have any other effects that are in place. There's no townie in the same location as a clue token. Uh, there's no additional effects that take place. So that's going to be like that. Uh, she cannot deal with that demon. I think we're going to end up losing the townie, which is unfortunate. Could have Spike move over there and deal with the demon. That might be my best bet. I don't have any other way, unfortunately, to deal with that vampire. And those that demon's going to move in there as well. It, this is a tough, tough call.
I could go ahead and activate Glorificus and start dealing with some of the plot items. I think I'm going to have to do that. Actually, let's have let's have her go here. She's going to use her special ability. It's going to be the the move and fight. Uh, she get, takes care of the vampire. She saves the two townies, but she does activate an event. Demon terrorizes UC Sunnydale. So that's going to be another a demon here. Townie needs help at Rosedale Cemetery. Uh, the Hellmouth cannot be activated this round. Demon automatically moves towards the nearest townie. So that is... We are, we're going to be dealing with dead townies left and right here. So his second action is going to be... His first action is to move to here. Her next action will be to move to Glorificus's mansion. His second action is to search for the clue token. Take that, and we've claimed our third clue token. At the end of each round, if there are any characters alone in their location, add one wound uh, to the Apocalypse track. That is nasty. So we will deal with that quickly. Uh, and now she appears. She appears right here. And when she appears, this is the part that's going to suck, add one townie to each unoccupied location and then spawn one demon at each location containing one or more characters. So this is going to suck. So unoccupied, I'm assuming, also means demons. So there's not going to be any demons that appear, or townies that appear with the demon, for example, over in Sunnydale Cemetery. But this just got harsh. We're now going to get two demons, one here, one here. Buffy gets to go again. She is going to, uh, her first thing that she can do, she can't do anything about the weapons, unfortunately. So she is going to have to use the cross and the tomes and knock out this element of the plot. And that is, each time a demon is spawned, it immediately moves towards the next townie. Now we have to check to see if we've dealt with it, and we've dealt with it. It's the same, it's the Ankh symbol, so that is good. So that is dead. Uh, his next action is going to be to move here. We're gonna lose some, we're gonna lose some people here. Uh, and then we can trade. So we'll do a little trading while he's here and give her this, and he'll keep the weapons and the holy water. And I think we're going to actually finish this off. Uh, so she will use, uh, her last turn will be to use the uh, weapons in the tome. And now I have to match the symbol. And the symbol matches, so that plot point is dealt with. And his last turn will be to use the weapons and the holy water. And we have to match here, but honestly, even if it didn't, I was just going to get rid of a basic action. This is the perfect time to do it. Those items are, are dealt with. She is defeated. And that's it. That is uh, that is the end of the game. We never actually had any of our, her abilities come up. So there are specials down here that get kicked in uh, when you have an event that occurs. But because he didn't use his event till the very end, and she used his her event at the beginning, um, we were able to avoid that. Uh, however, that would have been add one townie to the apocalypse track, or wounds cannot be removed from the apocalypse track, or characters, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, all sorts of nasty stuff. But she is defeated. We have defeated the big bad. Uh, I, I find that the end game of this can be a little on the simple side. I don't think we have to go through the rest of the round uh, to figure it out. As soon as Glor Glorificus is defeated, I think as soon as the big bad is defeated. Let's go ahead and check that. Uh, winning the game. Uh, when the final plot card is flipped face down, the big bat is defeated, the game is won. So we did it. We won. Uh, and, you know, honestly, like, I, I this is... I enjoy this because I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
Uh, I can see where for some people this would not be their favorite game uh, because it is a little on the simple side. Uh, it is it is not overly complex, and there are some definite negatives to the way that the game was constructed. Um, but I like it. I, I like the game, and uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, but for now, I'm going to sign off. Uh, this has been Day 54 of Adapt and Die Week, and I'll talk to you all later. Ciao.